Sam, he's a writer of, uh, who writes about cars, motorcycles, travel, and all that, and he has just uh, published his most uh, recent book, or I don't know, uh, Jason, if this is the first one. How are you, Jason? Actually, it's the first one. Yeah. So, 100 things for every gearhead to be, to do before they die. A uh, very interesting uh Um, title because uh, not only I mean there are a lot of things and I guess you've done all of them so it's uh it's pretty cool how long it took you to to gather all this information well I would say um, honestly like a lifetime to gather the information but I spent about uh, six months researching the book uh, from the time that I decided to write it um, and then uh, a couple of months writing it uh, the research was a blast I bet So, uh, as, as I said, you've done all, every, all of these things, I bet, huh? Well, most of them, at least. I, I have done a lot of them. Uh, I haven't done all of them yet, which is one of the reasons why I wrote the book. I, uh, you know, uh, I really love travel. I really love uh, doing things that have to do with automobiles, motorcycles. And I, I figured that if I liked it, that I wasn't that unusual. And there had to be a lot of other people who'd want to make a list of their own. No, oh, absolutely. So um, let's. Uh, I don't know what 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 order or by category did you uh, sort them out. I haven't seen the book yet. I, I just ordered it. Uh, so how did you? I mean, how do you categorize them? I, I guess. Well, I, I broke it down into about um, 15 different categories, um, and and some of them will be fairly obvious, I hope, and some of them uh, will be revelations for people, but. Um, They go from rides and drives, you know, great. And, and, and I should say also, this is um, uh, a USA version of, of the story. So all these things are within the, the, the boundaries of the U.S. But oh, okay. They can, as, they can serve as inspiration for anybody anywhere. Okay. Um, so dry, 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 uh, rides and drives. Uh, and I've, uh, of the ones that I mentioned on the, on the promotion information that you sent me, The Tale of the Dragon is one of the ones that I've done it only once, and, and that's uh, doable or, or more desirable, I guess, than in a motorcycle than in a car. What's, uh, what's your experience? Because you do both, right? I do. I've, I've driven it and I've ridden it, and uh, I, I find it, 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 it's, it depends on the vehicle. Um, I, I think it's fun in a, in a lightweight sports car like a Mazda Miata. Um, not so fun in a great big SUV where you're, you know, really <laughs> struggling to keep on the road. Yeah, and you have, like, kids in the back, right? <laughs> exactly. Kids in the back bouncing from side to side. Not so much fun. Um, uh, it's, it's a must-do for anyone who rides a motorcycle, yeah. uh, especially on the East Coast. Uh, I guess do you also also not only provide information about the, the, the places, but also, like, some tips about it? Because, for example, these... Uh, Tell the Dragon, from what I understand, it's, it has become so popular that now you you really have to plan it because uh, otherwise it'll be like either like too much traffic or maybe too much police presence that would allow you to to enjoy it, right? Absolutely. You 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 want to uh, if if you can do it on a weekday rather than on a weekend, that's always an advantage. You certainly want to do it during daylight hours, um, and and you want to try and you know do it off season a little bit because it, it has gotten so popular uh, that it can be a big traffic jam from one end to the other. So what is off-season there, then? Off-season is in the wintertime there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and, and uh, it's, it's surprisingly temperate there. It doesn't, they don't get a lot of snow or, or uh, ice, so it's, it's pretty doable all year round. Where is the location? It's South Carolina, right? I don't remember exact location. That's correct. It's right, it's right near the Tennessee border. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's close for you, Javier. Well, yeah, I know. I, uh, it's 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 near near to Florida. And again, I I did it once in a Boxster, in a Porsche Boxster, which was oh, really okay. really cool. And I actually compared a little bit, like to besides motorcycling, uh, skiing. I mean, that's the same feeling more or less, huh? But in four wheels. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's something like 135 turns and 11 miles. Yeah. Which is. Just, just kind of remarkable. Yeah, another one on the other coast of the country, the Pacific Coast Highway, and that's like, I mean, doable every time, any time of the year. I mean, it's just a beautiful place. What's your favorite sec sector of it? Because it's kind of long. It is kind of long. I, I, I really love the part. Um, I think that everyone uh, points to, which is a uh, Big Sur, which is between it's south of Carmel and Monterey and north of Hearst Castle. Yeah. So you've got about a, a, a 90 mile stretch there that's just, uh, it's, it's the place where 
heaven and earth and, and the ocean meet in, in the perfect balance. Um, and I believe it was uh, Henry Miller used to live in Big Sur, and he said that. Yeah, it's an amazing place. And, and that also includes the seven-mile drive around Pebble Beach, which is, like, even more more beautiful, I think, no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, your car, your motorcycle can take you to these destinations that um, j just will blow your mind. Yeah. And, and you can, you can pr project yourself living there and imagining what it's like to be there. So another one of the categories is car museums, and there are so many of those, and like some uh, even in the in the news lately, I guess it was last year when the Corvette uh, <laughs> Museum in Kentucky got a whole thing, right? Is that oh, included yeah, in your yeah. list? Uh, actually, the Corvette Museum did not make my list. Um, oh, oh, wow. Because it was, uh, I, I was trying for things that were a little bit more uh, expensive rather than one brand. Um, okay. Uh, so some of my favorite My favorite car museum right now in the United States is uh, in Tacoma, Washington, and it's called the LeMay. Have you been there? I haven't, and I, I, I've read a lot of things about it. I've seen some pictures, but uh, I've heard uh, something about it, so um, I, I can't wait to uh, both read it in your book and actually go in there. So it's uh, now it's in my list, too. Oh, good. Well, it's, it's a fantastic place, and, and like all the best car museums, to my mind, it, it, it emerged from a private car collection. Yeah. And and uh, these, these, this couple had an enormous car collection reputed to be the largest in the world at, at one point. Um, and this collection that they show off is really like the best from their years of, of collecting. And it's, it's very fascinating. And they built this tremendously interesting, architecturally significant building to house the collection. Yeah, again, I saw, I've seen pictures, uh, and there it, it's really fantastic. I also saw some uh, images in, your, in the information you sent us uh, with Jay Leno. Did, did you include his prop, uh, private garage in this? Because that's not public. No, no. Uh, I Actually, um, I have five interviews in the book with uh, famous gearheads. Okay. And I asked them about their experience. When did they decide that they were gearheads? Or when did they realize that they were gearheads? What's their favorite vehicle of all time? And uh, what's their favorite gearhead experience or destination? Yeah, I guess in, in, in our days, Jay Leno is like one of the, of the most uh, known, at least. And I have had the privilege once to be in his garage, and that place is amazing. I mean, it's like, uh, not only because of the amount of things that he has in there, but like how much knowledge he has about each individual piece in it. Oh, absolutely. And, and I would foresee a time when that collection becomes public. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that he's going to sell it off at any point, um, and it's so carefully curated. And once again, you know, it's all to his taste. Yeah, um, that it would be a shame for that collection to get broken up before uh, the general public had a chance. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully not, and uh, and uh, that that'll be a shame, really. So, can you? What are there like of the categories? Is like one of your favorites? Like driving schools had to be one because I mean. I, I know you, you love driving, so, I mean, uh, there's a lot of opportunities in there. Driving schools are, 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 are great, and they're all over the country, uh, very accessible. Uh, just about any place that has a, ra a, a, a racetrack will have a driving school attached. But surprisingly, my favorite place to go is a factory tour. Oh, okay. I love, I love getting inside the factory. It's like being inside the machine um, and really seeing... You know how how a car works from how it's made, and I I just love that, and and I love robots, and uh, there are robots at every factory now. I know it's really amazing, and now here in the south, in South Carolina, and um, uh, in that area, there's a lot yeah, of uh, Alabama, new factories. Georgia, yeah, yeah. So the, the and I think BMW now has a delivery program that they used to have or they still have for Europe, so people can go there and have the the performance center there, and that that includes both things, the driving school and the factory. So it's that's one of the of the good ones, I guess, huh? Yes, that's amazing. And um, uh, Porsche doesn't build cars in the United States right now, but they have a uh, driving school as well in the South, down at at Barber. Uh, motorsports in in um, in Birmingham. Have you been to that track? Yeah, yeah. That's 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 a beautiful place. Not only like the track on its own, but the way it's it's kept, and also there they have a pretty good museum there too. Motorcycles and cars. They have they have a, a, the world's best motorcycle collection there. Yeah, it's an amazing. 
amazing museum, and that's that's also on my list, the, the Barber Collection. So, Jason, we only have like one more minute, and uh, I wanted to ask you then, so what's left? I mean, what's, what, are, or what things are in your list that you haven't been able to do yet? Uh, I have not yet been to the Henry Ford Museum. Oh, really? Uh, that's surprising. Yeah, I, I've just never been able to get there. It's definitely on my list. Um, I haven't been, uh, I, and I'm going this year to El Mirage for the land speed record attempt. Yeah, that's great. Um, so that, that one's been on my list. And a third one, I still haven't been to the Indianapolis 500. Wow. Well, it's coming up in a couple of weeks, so yeah. <laughs> you can put it now. I'm, I'm, I'm working my schedule right now to see if I can make it happen. Excellent. Jason uh, Fogelson, he's the author of the of the new book, 100 Things uh, Every Gearheads should do before they die. So the book is every, available everywhere electronically too. I mean, they can order it like at Amazon and everywhere else, right? They can order it at Amazon, Barnes and Noble. They can also order it directly from me uh, at booksforgearheads.com. Okay. Booksforgearheads.com. And, and uh, I'll sign their copy and, and send it out that way. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, uh, Jason. And uh, uh, keep enjoying it. And uh, we will enjoy the book and uh, some of your... Uh, your advice is to sometimes maybe, I don't know if we will be able to, but complete at least some of the 100 things. Thanks, Javier. Thank you very much.